Toby South and Jeremy South, we're going to do our birdhouse using a flower pot. So we had a slab. Um, you can use almost any kind of material. This is easy to press clay into. So the first piece Toby is going to use is taking a ball of clay, pressing it into the middle of our flower pot, putting lots of pressure to smash it down. So you can smash it with your tennis ball. We can use your fist. We just want to smash it down. Go ahead and smash it down as hard as you can, bud. You want to smash it all down. Okay, and then once we flattened it out, we're going to do some designs with other clay that we press against the walls of the flower pot. So what we're doing is rolling out lots of coils and we're just creating some shapes. There's really no wrong shapes. You want to keep the coils thick. When you roll with your hands, you want to roll from your fingertip all the way to your wrist, kind of like the bottom of a rocking chair, moving back and forth. Lots and lots of coils. We're going to shape them into the flower pot. So we've started to press some of the coils into the flower pot. We're doing the first row. This is going to go upside down as the birdhouse. Um, or actually could go either way. You decide how you want it to go. So you've done a row. You want to take your fingers and you're going to blend the clay together. So blend the clay together with fingertips. Make sure it's smooth. You don't want to smash the clay against the wall. The goal is just to blend so you can keep the shapes. It's going to keep the shapes when we take the pot out. As you continue to add coils, you want to make sure they're really thick. About as thick as probably your index finger. They don't have to be a certain length, but you do want to blend them. Remember, don't smash, but you want to blend. Smashing removes the design. Blending keeps the design. Keep on going. Oh, you've possibly blended lots of the clay. You want to do as much as possible. Just remember birds might be inside of here. They do get used if you're patient and you place it in the right spots. So we're blending. Now to get this out, the best thing to do is just to let it dry a little bit because what you don't want to do is turn it on its side and try to tap it out. What's going to happen is it's going to break the flower pot in half almost instantly. The only safe way is kind of a soft angle. It's in between straight up and down and sideways, so it's just right on the edge. You can tap it just a little bit, and it may fall out. So tap, tap, and when you tap, it will possibly come out. And you can see all of the designs on the outside. And then we'll show you in just a minute how we start to develop it. Now we're creating the base. Now again, my recommendation would be to use um, the flower pot upside down. So this will be the top, this will be the bottom. Then you don't really have to do much for the roof. That way they have a bigger uh, space for the bird nest. So Toby is flattening out the clay for the bottom piece. You want to really stretch it out so it's quite large. What we are doing is adding some slip around the base of our birdhouse. And we made it larger than we needed, so we have a little area um, the birds can perch. So we have lots of slip. We want to make sure it's well connected. We can take our birdhouse, place it somewhere close to the middle, make sure it's as even as possible, put some pressure on it. And then around the edges we're going to add coils and we're going to blend them in. We're adding coils to the outside. Uh, they don't need to be very thick. We do want to use them as kind of a joint to blend our birdhouse bottom piece together. And we can slowly work that in, take your time, you can shape the bottom a little bit, and we can move to the next step. Okay, for the next few steps, we've cut out the opening for the bird. We've smoothed this out, and one thing you might want to be aware of is if you have something all the way around, oh, there's an ant crawling on it. Oh, no, it's so what, what we can do is we want to make sure there's a few spots that the water can drain off so it doesn't collect. And once water starts to collect on here, it can cause some cracking if it just sits there for a long period of time. So we blended it in. We've kind of given it a little bit of a wave. The perch, we've added 
um, some reinforcement for clay at the bottom. You notice it doesn't stick out very far and it's really, really thick. The top, you can always add a little bit of a design to it. One way to do that is to roll a, kind of a little blob out. You can take any kind of a tool and you can roll kind of at an angle. If we notice this here. And then we've created some simple designs. We can dip it in the slip and then we add it to the top. Now you want to be careful about making it too thick or too heavy. So this is probably about as heavy as you'd want. You want to blend it in with your fingers like this. Kind of a contemporary design right here. And maybe a little twist. So now I have my own little birdhouse. I've made the holes in a real secure spot right down a little ways um, so we can have a thin rope or possibly a strong wire that we can hang it um, at your choosing where you want to hang your birdhouse. And you can decorate with all kinds of paint. It does take a lot of clay. Hopefully this can help spur some ideas. There's no wrong way to do the birdhouse as long as you follow the guidelines of connecting, blending, and making sure it is strong. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.